as noted, uh, we are formulating our plans, we are writing out our procedures, and uh, we want to have those procedures clear, document absolutely everything, which extends into uh, principles for handling the disaster itself. You want to document absolutely everything you do, even though you are following a procedure. Uh, you want to document, you know, did, uh, you know, the procedure says who to call, who did you call? Did you call that person? Were you able to get through to that person? Um, the, uh, one of the sort of tricks of the trade, um, when a disaster happens and, you know, you've got some employee who is running around screaming, we're all going to die, whatever. You grab that person, you hand them a clipboard, you say, you follow me around, and you write down absolutely everything I do. Everyone I talk to, every phone call I make, what the phone number is, whether I got through, all of that kind of stuff. And that, you know, first of all, it, it settles them being given a job to do that they've got to concentrate on. Uh, but it also acts as your memory because, you know, under stress, you, I guarantee, are not going to remember absolutely everything that you did. So having someone documenting what you did is a, a very good idea. You might want to, uh, you know, make that part of your procedures. Anyways, we have procedures for setting up an EOC, or Emergency Operations Center. Um, I have mentioned that I uh, work with Emergency Support Services um, in the province of British Columbia. We get uh, standardized training. Um, the procedures there for responding to, well, really any kind of a disaster. I mean, you, you know, you have... Uh, certain procedures for small and certain for large, but by and large, um, you have a structure. And this structure, it's, it's used fairly widely in uh, formal emergency management planning because it's, uh, it's very fractal. Every component breaks down into a very similar structure. And the components inside that structure also break down into a very similar structure. So it's, it's uh, you know, there are structured ways to handle this. Um, and it's a very, very useful tool uh, for planning. Anyways, uh, you know, what's the, what's the procedure for the first call? Uh, number one, you know, who do you expect to get the first call? The first indication um, and who then do you call uh, for well you know different types of events uh, and as uh, the events collect and grow into an incident and as the uh, incidents collect and grow into a disaster you know who gets to declare the disaster and as that that building goes on you know, have you got, a, well, I mean, you, you should have an escalation process. Uh, who gets to make the calls? Who gets to make the decisions at the different levels? Um, the, uh, well, going back to the, that idea of the first call, um, it's probably coming into the help desk, right? So the help desk people should have specific training on recognizing that this is something that's growing and you should call somebody and who should you call who can make the decision that yes this is a disaster we uh need to call in you know and and start additional procedures here um so uh you know training for the help desk uh who as previously noted, are not necessarily the uh, most highly trained and paid 
people in our organization. So, you know, just uh, take note of that. They, you know, they are the people who are going to have to make some pretty important decisions in, in this regard. So, um, and, and, you know, the escalation process. Uh, all of these procedures that, that we need, you know, they're, they're all a part of the plan. Um, what about our personnel? Um, in, in terms of the personnel, you know, what are the procedures for different teams? Um, you know, so we, we collect all of this stuff. Uh, you know, we're going to have specialized teams in, uh, certain areas that, you know, communications, probably a big one, um, uh, as I say, you know, we're mostly concerned about IT here, but there are, you know, issues of uh, transportation of employees possibly to an alternate site. Uh, you know, so all of those procedures have to be dealt with. Then we get into the, the more formal testing phase of going through this plan that we have collected and put together. Um, and uh, first of all, there's a checklist. Um, you know, do we have this part of the plan? Do we have that part of the plan? Do, you know, have we addressed this? Uh, so we just, you know, we sit around the boardroom table, everybody goes through it, you know, is there anything that we have missed that's fairly glaringly obvious? Then there's a structured walkthrough. Again, you know, we're sitting in the boardroom, everybody's got a copy of the plan. Okay, we declare a disaster. There has been a fire at our main uh, headquarters. Uh, Bob, you're on site. What do you do? Bob opens, you know, to page one. And, okay, I call Harry, and he uh, gets to declare the disaster. You know, and, and so it's just structured walkthrough. And as you walk through it, you know, you, you can come to a point where you say, oh, wait a minute, um... You know, Harry retired. So, what do we do here? Anyways, um, then there's simulation, where we uh, we well, you know, this is the fun one. This, you know, you uh, it it can be used for training. Um, it, because it can be used for awareness, too. You know, we, yes, we have got uh, a business continuity plan, a disaster recovery plan. This is, you know, and, and so you're informing people and doing a little bit of training. This is what happens. This is what you'll be doing. And, of course, there's a bit of fun. You, you know, get volunteers and uh, squirt ketchup all over them and... Uh, Tell them, you know, okay, you lie down here on the floor until the first aid people come and get you. And uh, at the end of the day, you think, wait a minute, didn't we uh, have somebody else as a victim here? And go back to find where you left them. And there's a note that says, bled to death and went home. So, anyways, um, simulations, lots of fun. Uh, parallel operation, where you, you run your business and you have the the alternatives going at the same time and then a full interruption and the first step in any full interruption is update your resume because if something goes wrong it's a problem 